Hello and welcome to another episode of Video Game Archaeology. I'm Jefferson B. Howe and today we're playing Bucky O'Hare on the NES by Konami. A little bit of history into this game. Uh, this game was released in 1992 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, it's famous for being one of the hardest games on the NES. Apparently there is also a cheat code to make it harder. Though having played this now I have no idea why you would want to do that. I guess some people just hate themselves. Um, now this game actually came out a year after the television series which is what I loved as a kid. I loved the television series growing up. There was just something about it. It was that it was that classic early 90s time when there was when animals were big brightly coloured and bad attitudes and went around fighting. That was that was it. We had the turtles, we had the Thundercats, we had Buffy O'Hare. I loved it. Now as you've seen in my previous video, I suffered massive Sega fanboyism. I didn't want to know the NES. And this is why we we're doing these games in this order. We did Earthbound first, because Earthbound was the first game, the game that I picked up recently when I first first thought. I missed out on a lot because of my fanboys and I need to go back and look at these game systems, find out what it was I missed. This is the second video because this is the only game from the early 90s that I remember seeing coming out and wanting to play despite it not being on the master system. This is the only game I saw advertised and I thought I want to play that and then I was actually disappointed that he didn't come to the master system. So this actual run through um, we've got on the screen now, this was the very first time that I played Bucky O'Hare for the NES. Um, playing it on the NES box for Windows 10, uh, but I will, after playing this, I fall in love with it. I will be buying the cartridge as soon as I can find one for a decent price on eBay. Now, the first time I picked this up, I noticed how hard it was, but people don't lie when they say this is a stupidly hard game. It is. You will. I've edited it out because it's it's just fun to watch, just death after death after death. But you'll you'll see my uh, my life counter and my my high score popping up and down where I've cut out the repetitive and multiple deaths in certain areas. But while it's ridiculously stupidly hard, it's it's not as brutal as it could be. It doesn't punish you for sucking. Um, you die, you die, you die. Game over. Instant continue. You start on the last act that you're on. You, you never get. You never go back. You never lose progress. Once you get to the boss zone, that's it. You don't have to do a le do the le whole lot again. If you die. And. Um, I appreciate that in a way. It's basically unlimited lives. It just it wipes your points. We're going to kill you a lot, so here's unlimited lives. But you, if you run out past a certain amount, your high score is gone. And no one cares about the high score. No one has ever cared about the high score on any game on a home console. The arcade was different. You know where you had it was plugged in for a long time. You had the scores up. Uh, it was very competitive. The arcade served the point. You know, the high scores never served a point in video games for the home market. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog for instance, does anyone remember their high score from Sonic the Hedgehog? Does anyone ever, did anyone ever make, even note it down? Has anyone ever compared high scores in Sonic the Hedgehog? No. So back onto this. What's good about it? What do I love about it? The gameplay, it solid controls, it handles exactly like you want it to. Um, there's there's no controller delay, there's no um, miss hitting, you land where you land, you don't pass through things. The one bad thing I would say is if you get hit mid jump you just drop. Um, it's similar to the issue with Super Mario Brothers where if you're playing two player and you jump and the other player pauses the game you drop out of the air when they unpause it so they can pause you as you're making a jump over a gap and you drop down it and then it's there go 
Um, obviously, not playing this two player, but the bad guys, when you're leaping and you take a hit, you stop and you drop. Um, and I did lose an awful lot of lives to to that. Um, the only that I mean, that's just something you've got to get around. It's not going to be an issue. You get used to it. You work around it. For me, the only disappointment really with this game is the music. Now, obviously, you can hear the music's great. The music is brilliant, but it's not Bucky O'Hare. The biggest most famous aspect of the Bucky O'Hare franchise is the TV theme tune. By a long shot. Not many people watched the cartoon, it didn't do very well, but even now you'll find it if you go to YouTube and search Top 10 Kids TV cartoon themes, Bucky O'Hare is always in the top 10. He is always there, even if, if he's not in top 5, it is one of the greatest cartoon theme shows ever made. It's got everything. Um, even the Nostalgia Critic has stuck it in his list of top ones and he hates everything. If you haven't checked his videos out, go and do it. He hates everything, just like I do. He's brilliant. Um, so back to the game. It's fantastic. That's all I can really say about it. It's. I wish I could go back in time and tell nine-year-old me the NES doesn't suck as much as you think it does. Maybe the Master System isn't as good as you think it is. Okay, maybe I wouldn't tell younger me that. Younger me would get angry because younger me knew the Master System was the way forward. But playing this game is just... It's strengthening my belief that I missed out on so much. And it's... It's giving me the resolve to go back and try other things. I mean, there's, there's obviously things I'm not going to go back and try, like the Atari 2600, because that blows. I, I had that when it was out, I had it and I didn't like it. I have gone back and played a couple of games and no. Um, everyone hates the E.T. game on there for very good reason. Honestly, gameplay wise, I can't really tell the difference between E.T. and any other Atari game. We're drifting. Uh, Bucky O'Hare. So, the music is, is great, it's great, but it's not Bucky O'Hare. The characters are Bucky O'Hare sort of. They're, they're not quite what I was hoping for graphics wise. Bucky looks like he's got a giant head and a little squat body when he was actually kind of quite tall and lean in the cartoon and that, that creature right there is not Blinky. Blinky does not have a purple ponytail. So, you know that's kind of the big giveaway. Obviously the graphics the resolution on the NES, they were limited, um, but they did so well with the Turtles games on the NES. The graphics on that, I'm a little disappointed with the with the, the characters, the design of the characters in this game. If I take this as a Bucky O'Hare game, I don't like it. It's got very little to do with the Bucky O'Hare comics or TV series, it's a platformer. If I take it as a platformer, i got to say, this is probably my favourite 8-bit game that I've ever played so far. I've played every single Master System game and this, it's just got everything. It's challenging, it's hard. Not this part, but the next part um, you've got. It's similar to this with the well, there we go this part now the level design on this is just brilliant everything changes up it's always chucking new things at you and this one when I finally got to the top because of things like that when I finally made it to the top it gave me such a sense of achievement that I have not felt from a video game for a very long time I honestly can't remember the last time I got a, a, a real sense of achievement from just a small part of a video game. It's been such a long time. I don't think I've, I've had much of a sense of achievement from video games since, well, since probably PlayStation 1 era. You do get a sense of achievement with the achievements and things on the Xbox 360, Xbox One, but not as much. I put I put 
days of working to get the Minecraft, all of the Minecraft achievements, and that was it. I, I got him, and I said, "Yeah, okay, whatever. What's next?" I mean, this, I was like, "I did it. I did it. Didn't die. One go, straight up." Just such a sense of achievement from this, and it's difficult to explain that to the younger generation who didn't grow up with this sort of thing. If they don't see something pop up on the screen letting them know they've got an achievement, poof, there's no achievement got. But actually getting to the top of this was... I was sweating, I have to tell you, I was sweating. Like I said, I will be picking up the cartridge for this. Um, I don't think I want to just I want to pay for the full box version, but I will be getting the cartridge. I do want to play this on the original hardware. It's not as good playing it with the uh, the Xbox controller. I, that's one thing that I I love emulation and I love the ability to go back and play all these games without having to spend vast sums of money on it. But the games that I do love, like this one, like Earthbound. I will pick up the genuine cartridges and play it with the genuine controllers because that's that's something that I love. I love the original controllers. I can you can put any Mega Drive game in front of me, I will sit and play it. But I will always pick the option that allows me to use the original Mega Drive controller. In my opinion, best controller ever made. This part, I mean, this is this is, and uh, again, I got a sense of achievement from figuring this out. It was brutally hard. I died countless times trying to get through this level, but it's trial and error because you've got unlimited continues, which is effectively unlimited lives, and you don't go back. You just start at the same level again after you continued. Try, try, try again, eventually you work it out, you get through, massive sense of achievement, and this game just throws so much so much at you to work out, There's, I don't think it would be possible to pick up and play and just complete in one go. So many games, it's possible for people who've played games for a very long time to go back and pick up something like Sonic the Hedgehog, like Super Mario, pick it up and just complete the thing in one run. Having never played it before, just pick it up and complete the entire game in one run. And this is one of those, it's so challenging that you can sit there and you can do it all in one run, but it is going to punish you for doing it. You have to learn everything. You have to... You'll, you, you'll sit there, if you've never played this game before, you'll sit there for 10 to 15 minutes just dying repetitively before you get to the first boss. You will be able to complete this in one run. I'm looking at the times that I've played, probably take you a, a couple of hours. Could take you a couple of hours just to complete the first couple of levels if you don't if you haven't played it before. This this game is brutal, but but it keeps you coming back. And that is what I love about Bucky O'Hare. And that is what I love about this game. You will keep coming back to it. It's challenging, it is mind-bogglingly hard, but it's not frustrating, and games shouldn't be frustrating. And that is something that they have perfected with this game. I love this game, I cannot recommend it enough. If you don't have a NES, or you can't afford the stupid prices these cartridges go for, get an emulator and give this game a go. There are very few games I will say this, but everyone should play this game and give it a go. I shall see you with the next episode.